Hi guys, today we're gonna to talk about combining like terms. So you'll see I've already kind of labeled the center here with combining like terms. And really 99% of the time, your directions are going to be simplify. So I'm gonna write the directions kind of in the center so we don't have to go through and, and keep writing it over and over and over again. So let's talk about some big ideas with combining like terms. Um, first of all, when you're talking about putting like terms together, you can only put together terms with the exact same variable. If it doesn't have the same exact variable, then you can't do it. Um, and in some ways, this is like um, when we used to um, add or subtract in elementary school. Because when we talked about elementary school, we would use a method that was based on kind of lining it up. And I'm gonna take that idea with an elementary example and then we'll apply it to what we're gonna do. So maybe in elementary school, if you got 17 plus 23, I would know that 99% of you guys would probably do this. You would go ahead and kind of get them lined up. They call it the vertical method sometimes because you line them up vertically. But really, you are putting like terms together because the 7 and 3 are both in the 1's digit. 1 and 2 would be in the 10's, and then it would be 100's and 1,000's, and I could keep going. So if I totaled it up, I would end up with 40 by putting my like terms together. It's the same kind of idea when we're talking about algebra. So if I were talking about algebra here, let's talk about this algebra skill. 5x plus 3y plus 7x plus 2y. So if I look at this list, we said they have to have the exact same variables. And I can see in this slide, I have x's and I have y's. So I'm actually gonna do this lineup method and I'm gonna make a column for X and for Y. Now here's the only thing I would caution you about. If you have more than one variable, write them in alphabetical order. So X, then Y, if Z were here, it'd be here. So much easier to combine them when you do that. And you'll see that method used on almost all the answers you might see for something. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to kind of put terms together with the operation that may be in front of them. So you'll notice that I've kind of circled them and I've done it so that the sign in front of it kind of goes with it. And now I'm going to start to put them where they go. So 5x, that plus 3y, I'm going to write as a positive 3y, so the sign goes with it. Plus 7x. I'm going to write as positive 7x, and plus 2y, I'm going to write as positive 2y. Now all I need to do is to total it. So first of all, if these both have x's, x is going to be in the answer. 5 plus a positive 7 would be positive 12. In the second column, I know y is going to be there. Positive 3 plus positive two is positive five. So if it's positive, I'm gonna write a plus in the middle. So my answer would be 12x plus five y. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put you through all different kinds of situations so you can kinda of see what this looks like when you see different kinds of numbers or coefficients as we call them in front. So I'm gonna do what we did on kind of the last couple of videos. I'm actually gonna take my organizer and I'm gonna turn it 
so that you can actually see me solve right on the same graphic organizer. So for A, I have um, negative 6K and positive 7K. So I know Ks are my only values. Just going to do this so I can make sure I got my signs with them. So negative 6K, and instead of writing plus 7K, I'm going to write positive 7K. And I just have to total them. So first of all, I know K has got to be in the answer. But I have negative 6 plus a positive 7 would be positive 1. And if it's 1K to be the most simplified version, we're going to drop the 1 and just write it as K. The reason that we do that is because we assume there's a 1 there whether we write it or not. Okay, let's go to our next one. Remember, if you need to hit pause on this so that you can write stuff down, feel free to. Okay, 12R minus 8 and minus 12. So I know I have R's and numbers. So this is the way it works. R is the only letter that goes first. If you have a number only value, the number is always going to be the furthest one over to the right. Okay, now I'm just going to circle my stuff so I can get the signs with it. And then I'm going to start to put them where they go. So 12R minus 8, I'm going to make it negative 8. Minus 12, I'm going to make it negative 12. And then I can start to total up. So the R column is kind of easy. 12R is the only one that I have there. Negative 8 plus negative 12 is negative 20. And if it's negative, I'm going to write it as minus 20. So it's 12R minus 20. Okay, in the next one, I have n minus 10 plus 9n minus 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a 1 here. I just don't want to forget that it's there. And then I have n's and numbers. So I'm going to start to make our little pieces so that we can put them where they go. So 1n minus 10, I'm going to make negative 10. So I'm doing plus 9n, I'm going to do positive 9n. Minus 3 is going to become negative 3. So make sure you get them in the right columns. 1n plus a positive 9n is 10n. Negative 10 plus negative 3 is negative 13. So I'm going to write minus 13. Okay, let's go on to the next one. we got one more left in the front, and then we'll move to the back. This one is minus r minus 10r. So I'm going to add a 1 here. I know my only column is going to be r. And then I'm going to start to get my terms here. So negative 1R minus 10R. So that minus 10R I wrote as a negative 10. So if I added these up now, it would be negative 1R plus a negative 10R would be negative 11R. Okay, now we're going to move to the back and kind of look at a few more examples. Okay, hang on, I'm just going to turn this around right. Now your organizer should look like this. It should be all filled in like this when you're done. Some of you, I ha I'm not sure you're using the organizers. If you are in cohort C and you have not gotten them from me, you need to. Because pretty soon we're going to be graphing and you're going to be lost without them. Okay, so still combining like terms, our directions are still simplify. So let's go to E. 
So negative 2x plus 11 plus 6x. So I have x's and I have numbers. I'm just going to circle to get that part together. And now I'm going to sort. So negative 2x, that plus 11, I'm going to make positive 11. Plus 6x, I'm going to write positive 6x. And now we can total. So in my x column, I have negative 2 plus a positive 6, which would be positive 4, and x is going to come down with it. And in the next column, we're pretty, it's pretty easy because we only have that positive 11. So I'm going to write it as plus 11. Okay, let's go to F. So on F, I have 11R minus 12R. So I know I only have R's. And right there, I've kind of got my terms kind of sorted now. So let's see, 11R. Instead of doing minus 12R, I'm going to do negative 12R so that we can total them. So positive 11R plus a negative 12R is going to be negative 1R. And just like we said before, to simplify it, if it's only 1, we're going to drop it. So it's just going to be negative R. The reason that we do it is we assume there's a 1 there whether we write it or not. Okay, we've got two more left here. Just going to turn it. So I have 12R plus 5 plus 3R minus 5. So I know I have R's and I have numbers. So I'm going to circle them just so I have the signs with them. Make it easy to get them in the columns correctly. So 12R plus 5R becomes positive 5. Plus 3R becomes positive 3R. And minus 5 becomes negative 5. So now I can total. So 12R, oops. So 12R plus a positive 3R is positive 15R. Now, you, again, you don't have to write the positive in front because we assume it's positive. Then I have positive 5 and negative 5, if they get added together, would be 0. So you don't have to write the 0. You can just go right down to this piece. So it'll just be 15R. Okay, I'm going to just turn it to get to the last one. So negative V plus 12V. So my first thing is going to be to add a 1 here, and V is my only column. So negative 1V plus 12V. Negative 1V plus 12V is going to be 11V, and that will be our final answer. Okay, we'll pick up with this in the next video.